Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part two of the Q&A, so let's go ahead and get this started. Thoughts on HIT by Mike Menzer for bodybuilding. Uh, I don't really discuss bodybuilding here. It's not a bodybuilding channel. But let's briefly go over the good and the bad. Mike Menzer was insane. Um, anyone who's looked at it understands that, and, and I do mean that in a literal sense. He was, he was quite mentally ill. He was insane had some crazy ideas. Some of them had merit in the sense that he got people from that era away from excessive junk volume. And we know junk volume is not ideal. Most of the studies that look at it find is volume reaches a certain threshold, which is way below what bodybuilders are doing at that time that hypertrophy goes down. They're not overtraining. They're just simply using junk volume. And junk volume in the absence of anabolics doesn't really produce muscle growth. He got people to bring volume down and to train really hard with every set. Okay, that's the, the upside. The downside is that he didn't do anything scientific. He would call it science, but he really based everything he did off of philosophies of Ayn Rand and called it science. The, the later science has debunked a lot of his data, like the really low frequency training, for example. Debunked. We know that's not useful. Most people will maximize hypertrophy training a muscle closer to twice a week give or take a little bit. Uh, the excessively low volume. We know that we can build muscle in much lower volumes than people have oftentimes thought. He takes it to the extreme, too low really, to, to optimize muscle growth. Number three, taking sets beyond failure, where he would take all oh, absolute failure, intensity stuff. And this is not intensity. This is not what intensity means in strength training. The bodybuilding term for intensity is no way related to what sports science or strength and conditioning calls intensity of the weight. In fact, his, all of his training would be moderate to low intensity if we use the scientific definitions, right? Because what's high intensity? 95 to 100% of your one rep max, right? If you can do three reps, it's not high intensity. So, but his taking sets beyond failure, that hasn't panned out well in the literature. And I've, I've done videos recently discussing the problems with that of the same problems you run into with short breaks, it doesn't produce extra hypertrophy for the most part. Getting a set to failure or one rep away, you're going to maximize the muscle growth from one set. Doing drop sets, forced reps, rest pause doesn't actually seem to cause extra muscle growth. It just doesn't. And there's reasons for that. I've broken down specifically in, in recent videos in, in the last month or two why that's the case. So this has all been, most of his, his theories have been debunked with modern science. They're, they're not really particularly useful. Very few people have made great progress on, on what he has promoted. But the upside, he gets people to actually doing hard work on every set. That was something people were not doing. And getting away from junk volume. So he's had a positive, but a lot of it's been largely debunked. And I would say there is almost nothing from that time period that's going to be of value to you in the modern world. We have much more modern science that's able to measure things better a lot more experience, much larger numbers of people work out than they did 30 years ago and lift weights, even for all sports purposes. A lot more money has gone into studying it. You can largely ignore anything being done 30 years ago. You can just completely ignore it. We have better modern data. All right, next question. In your Ice Cream Fitness 5x5, I'll be doing the cutting version. Can I add cardio into my off days? Well, I'm gonna give you the same answer I always give on cardio. You should always be doing cardio. Everyone should do cardio. Particularly off days is a great place to work in cardio. However, you need to add it very gradually. And I recommend that you do most of your cardio adding when you're bulking. If you're gonna do the cutting version, you're cutting. If you add a bunch of cardio in early on while you're cutting, you will lose muscle tissue. You're using it to create your deficit. This has been my experience, been the experience of many coaches I know, been the experience of people who do or text at the DEXA scan place. If you're going to add cardio while cutting, you need to add it very, 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 very slowly. I've been reducing my cardio while cutting. I did more cardio while bulking and I've cut mine to about two thirds of what I was doing while cutting. I don't have the extra calories to fuel it, right? So doing some cardio on your off day is a good idea, but if you haven't been doing any, you need to add it in in very small increments or it is absolutely going to interfere with your muscle growth and even retaining muscle. This needs to be added slowly, but 
should you be doing cardio on off days? Yes, so should everybody. It would be a good idea for every person to do some cardio on their non-lifting days, no matter what program they're on. It would be a good idea. All right. Next question and last question of the week. My max SSB good morning is 145 kg. My max cambered bar GM is 180 kg. Rep work at 70% is clean and respectable. When I go to the straight bar for 235 for 3 by 10, why did you just jump from pounds to kilos in the same question? It makes people do math to compare, brother. Come on. Come on, Emmerich. Why is it incredibly difficult to stop the low back from rounding? Straight bar seems to be the most effective variation. What gives? Oh, I don't think the straight bar is the most effective variation. I like the cambered and the SSB. I almost never have my lifters who have access to both of those do the straight bar. Almost never do it. So why is it hard for you? Because you're not setting up tight enough. In other words, you are probably letting your chest cave. You've learned how to keep everything in a good position probably with the SSB. There might be some bit back rounding. You've learned to push back with it on the camber bar because the camber bar doesn't require you to get tight, right? Because it can sit up there and you can just pull your scapula back and you're good. When you are going to the straight bar, you probably have the bar too loose up on your back, right? Probably have the bar too loose on your back. You do not have yourself ratcheted up super tight. You're not pulling down hard on the bar. Your elbows might not be pointed at the floor. They might even be pointed back. In which case, what's happening, you're not tight up top. And if you're not tight up top, what's going to happen? That's going to go down chain. And because you're not focused on staying tight, you're not keeping your chest up. And if you're not keeping your chest up and your upper back in extension with good scapular retraction and the elbows pulled down, you're loose. Chest caves. The rest of the back will follow. You're not able to find your groove because the lower back rounds on a good morning when we try to go too far on the range of motion with our torso. And because you're not tight up top, you can't feel when the low back is rounding because everything is loose and so you just let it all get loose. When something happens in one part of the body as we're lifting on big lifts, it changes things downstream. So because you're not tight up top, you can't feel the rounding occurring. So instead of your hips being the limit on your range of motion, instead of letting your hips be the limit on your range of motion, which should be what limits your good morning, right? You're extending deeper. And because you don't have the upper back tight, you're not feeling the rest of the back when it gets loose and rounds. You have to pull in tight when you have a straight bar on your back and you have to grip it. You've got to keep the elbows down. You have to keep it pulled in tight. Your lats have to be completely retracted. Your scapula have to be retracted. You need to be actively pulling down on the bar and you need to keep your upper back in extension. That means chest up, chest proud, full lungs. And if you don't do that, it's going to allow that to happen and you're not going to feel it happen. You're going to see it on the camera, but you're not going to feel it when it occurs. So you're not going to be able to stop when it should be your hips. We stop on a good morning when our hip range of motion is complete. That is what determines our range of motion, not our back angle. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.